okay so in the intensive care units we usually have this urine dipstick method to measure the ketones in the diabetic ketoacidosis so understand that this is not a good method to confirm diabetic ketoacidosis nor a good method to monitor the resolution of diabetic ketoacidosis so understand why so there are three types of ketone bodies which are being formed in this particular condition one is beta hydroxybutyric acid which is the major ketone body the second is estoestate and the third is a stone, which actually is not a acid per se. So the nitroposide re reaction in the urine district, this reacts with the acetoestate and the acetone uh, to a lesser extent. Now, suppose the patient is having decay and has a large amount of beta hydroxybutyrate, but less amount of acetoestate and acetone. So if you test by urine dipstick method, suppose the threshold uh, levels of acetoestate or acetones are less in the urine and beta hydroxybutyrate is more, it will nitroposide will not react with it and that's why you will, can get a false negative result secondly suppose now when the decay starts resolving what happens that the shift happens from beta hydroxybutyrate to estoestate so although the beta hydroxybutyrate is going down estoestates are coming up and estone are being formed and now it starts giving a positive result because the nitroposide reaction will happen with estoestate. So you will feel that still the patient is having decay or persistent diabetic ketoacidosis. Also, acetone, which is mainly uh, uh, washed out by the lungs, it, it happens a gradual process. So it may remain elevated for 36 hours, even after the resolution of decay. So you can get a false positive results by the urine dipstick method, which is using the uh, nitroposide reaction. So urine ketones is not a good uh, way to monitor uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. You should use the ABG at least. Now, so what we should use the resolution criteria for DK. So if you can measure in the serum, you should measure the beta hydroxybutyrate. Uh, and the value should be less than 0.6 uh, millimoles per liter. Or the anion gap resolution in the ABG. Secondly, if the pH is more than uh, 7.3 in the ABG and the bicarbs are more than 18. So this is also one of the criteria and sugars are less than 200. But uh, mind you, if the uh, anion gap and decay uh, shift from high anion gap metabolic acidosis to normal anion gap metabolic acidosis because of flu resuscitation, it may uh, mimic or complicate the uh, monitoring of uh, decay resolution. So if you are getting normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, that means your decay part is resolved. It is because of the flu resuscitation. So I hope this was helpful. Do read more about it.